The craziest stories on paternity court. It was a one night thing. How is that even possible though? We have a lot of people here on this earth. They are products of one night stands. Did you use protection on that one night? No. That's a recipe for making a baby. He was the person I was with at the time. Well, it doesn't matter who you're with when the doctor tells you you're pregnant. It matters who you're with when the child is conceived. You know, because they say they pregnant, especially when I hear mm -hmm. that she's a promiscuous woman, what? had yeah. a boyfriend. I was I mean, we don't believe this one is us. He enjoyed it every night. That's all okay, right. Oh, he oh, enjoyed oh, it. Oh, I heard oh, it was oh, one night. Following the Cheaters and Babies Brigade, we've got Miss Walton claiming Mr. Deaver might be the daddy. But there's a plot twist involving cell phone snooping and a pregnancy test conspiracy. Better strap in, folks. Here we go. I never had sex with him unprotected, so it was never any uh, unprotected sex. Also, the time of conception, I did not can, mess with that guy. You can initially put the condom on, but while you're having Your Honor, sex, I guys, know if I had sex they there, can I would slip know the that. condom off, you know, do different things, stuff like that, so you never oh. really know. By the looks of it, the baby mama did accept there could be doubts, but she seemed sure of the supposed protective measures. However, the snooping resulted in more than one possible candidate. Classic romance, right? Love was truly in the air, along with a hint of sarcasm. I had sex with a guy with protection. I never had unprotected sex with anybody besides him. You admit you had cheated on her, but then she retaliated, had sex with a person. Yes, having sex with a guy that I knew for years, other guys that I know of. Other know. guys? Oh, other guys. Yeah. So you think it's more than one guy? So Miss Walton indeed cheated, but for the good old tit for tat fiasco. However, she seemed to have a habit of going back and forth on her claims. Is it trust issues or just a case of crossed wires? Because from cheating to faking tests, that was a lot to take in. What really happened was she had somebody, whoever it was, that was actually pregnant use her urine, and that's how... I mean, that's that's how it happened. So you faked the pregnancy test, Miss Deaver? Yes, ma'am, I did. I wanted him to feel the exact way I felt when he did all the things that he did to me. Well, what do you know? All that crying wolf turned out to be true, as Mama ended up pregnant for real. But now the baby daddy had a little hard time believing it. Though his suspicions had a pretty solid basis, Mommy had the gall to call them confused. Did you believe you were the father? It was all around this one time seemed like, man, where she was messing no, with Honor, me and still, true. you know, I'm that's finding text messages about her bragging about the guy's sex and all of this, so it, it, it just, I didn't know what to believe. That's not true. He's getting the times mixed up. He's confused. Enter the birth certificate conundrum. It appears baby daddy had been involved in the journey. However, the certificate had no evidence of that. Evidently, on the day of birth, mommy wanted him to sign, and the hospital staff stepped in when daddy expressed doubts. A vigilant nurse at your service. The story that I told her, it led to her seeing that I had a little doubt. But she said, even if I wanted to now, I cannot sign a birth certificate. She told me I couldn't sign a birth certificate just because she felt that. that I had doubt. The was, nurse in the hospital told yeah. you yes, she, said she I would not. not allow you to sign yes, it. Yes, even because if Because you're wanted. expressing doubt. Yes. Well, it was not just a legal document. It's a symbol of trust, or the lack thereof. It seems mommy's antics were now biting her right back. Should not have lied and deceived that much, huh, Miss Walton? Man doesn't trust you. You've given him every reason not to. Right. Him right. cheating on you and all of that is absolutely wrong and unacceptable if you all were in a relationship. I would have respected her more if she didn't try to get back at me, and then I would be rubbing her feet, begging her every day to, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry for what I did. Now, before the guy went on to give a speech, our DNA queen stepped in and told him what was what. Oh, he certainly faced the shenanigans of a woman scorned. What he had to realize was that he started it. You know the uh, saying, hell have no fury. Like a what? Woman scorned. You don't mess with a woman. Yeah. Because we love with our whole heart. And when we do and when you crush it, some of us are able to walk away, but some of us feel like we need to get some revenge before we walk away. Will the truth be revealed? Well, you were in luck, because those DNA results were in. Yep, the moment of truth was here, and a lot was at stake. Will these results shatter or solidify their rocky relationship? Let's find out. Mr. Deaver, you are his father. Never heard. How do you feel, Miss uh, Walker? I'm happy, but I already knew. Um, he had doubts, but just one seed of doubt, right? right. Miss Miles thought her dear old dad was resting in peace, 
until reality shattered that illusion three agonizing years ago. Now she's on a desperate mission to prove that Mr. Fully Love is the father she never knew. Buckle up for an emotional roller coaster. And the rumor in the town that we grew up in said that Mr. Fully Love was deceased. And that's what I was led to believe because my mom hadn't seen him since I was born. How did you find out he was alive? A friend of the family, we ran into each other at the store, and he said him and Mr. Fully Love are friends. Picture this bleak scenario. Miss Miles living in a world where her father was nothing but a memory, thanks to some town rumors. But then, a family friend spills the bitter truth that Mr. Fully Love is, in fact, alive. Oh boy, we're just setting the course for a rather interesting confrontation. We tried to reach Mr. Fully Love on numerous occasions. Text messages, calls, voicemails, pictures, and I didn't hear from Mr. Fully Love. How long does it take you to actually get in touch with him? Almost three years. <laughs> And so for three years, you're just, what, waiting every day, wondering, is this the day he's gonna call me back? But wait, the tragedy deepens. Mr. Fully Love confesses to the reasons behind his delayed response, involving a friend and some tangled drama. Mrs. Fully Love adds a layer of Christian drama. Well, it's just sad to say a girl is being raised without a dad. My wife is a Christian, and she might not like this. Okay, your wife is a Christian. This happened 25 years ago. He wasn't even married to this woman. So if his wife is the perfect Christian, she should accept my daughter, because I'm a thousand percent sure that he is her father. The truth about the ill-fated relationship between Miss Miles' mom and Mr. Fully Love is laid bare. It involves dancing, betrayal, and shattered dreams. Mr. Fully Love tries to justify himself, but there's a lot more involved in this tragedy. And oh wait, Miss Fully Love has her mouth full. You know, because they say they pregnant, especially when I hear mm -hmm. that she's a promiscuous woman. What? Had yeah. a boyfriend, I already had a baby. You know what? So why? I I mean, we gonna believe this one is ours. He enjoyed it every night. That's all okay, right. Oh, he oh, enjoyed oh, it every night. I heard it was one night. I heard it was one night. Okay, then. I heard it okay. was one okay. night. Okay. Miss Miles admits to sleeping with her best friend's father, Mr. Fully Love. The affair, occurring three weeks after the friend's funeral, becomes a tragic tale of regret and secrecy. Despite Mr. Fully Love recalling the intimate encounter, he insists it happened only once, unaware of Miss Miles' existing relationship and child. I didn't know she had no kids, Your Honor. You said you did all your night. But, but hold on, Mr. Fully Love. Do you, no do you remember the day you pulled up on her mother's oh, no. house? No, I don't. Yeah. You don't remember that? No, no, I so don't. is it your testimony that after having a sexual relationship with this young woman, you never even knew she was pregnant? Never. Anticipation fills the courtroom as the DNA results are unveiled. Miss Miles, visibly moved, had a lot going on in her head. Let's see how that goes. This decade-long mystery was about to be solved. So buckle up for some paternity sprinkle. Mr. Fully Love, you are the father. That is your Anthony's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful daughter. It's nice to meet you, Miss Kendall. Nice to meet You're you. You're a beautiful lady. Can I get a hug? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you. Isn't that just so tragic for the dad and daughter to miss so many important years of each other's life? Well, like they say, it's better late than never. This happens to be one of the most tragic paternity cases ever witnessed. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that moment. Mm -hmm. Ms. Miles, how does it feel? Oh, it feels awesome. I got a dad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know this has been a long time coming, Ms. Miles. I see your emotion, but I need you now to allow your daughter this moment, this space, and the grace to get to know her father. We met Miss Laws and Mr. Bailey, yet another confusing case. Miss Laws is convinced that Mr. Bailey is the father of her 19-month-old son, but he denies it, pointing out that his mother has doubts. There's also a twist involving Miss Laws' older son, who is four years old, but his birth certificate bears another man's name. Me and Mr. Davis was actually intimate for a year and a half. I never got pregnant. The first night that I actually cheated and slept with Mr. Bailey, two months later, I find out I'm pregnant. I told the both of them when I found out. You told both men. Who was at the birth with you? Mr. Davis. Mm -hmm. Who is on the birth certificate for the first child? Mr. Davis. How about I start calling in some facts? Their love started with dating back in middle school. Well, after seeing so many cases, seems like 90% of teenage love ends up in paternity disputes, huh? <laughs> it seems they had an on-and-off-again relationship, 
And above all else, they even had a long distance relationship. You led Mr. Davis to believe that he was the father. When I slept with Mr. Bailey, I was still in a relationship with Mr. Davis. It was a one night thing. How is that even possible though? We have a lot of people here on this earth. They are products of one night stands. Did you use protection on that one night? No. That's a recipe for making a baby. But here's the scoop, guys. Miss Laws told both Mr. Davis and Mr. Bailey about the pregnancy leading Mr. Davis to believe he was the father. Mr. Davis was present at the birth and is listed as the father of Jamari's birth certificate. Just wow! But later, she admits to cheating Mr. Davis with Mr. Bailey. When I told Mr. Bailey, I told him second after I told Mr. Davis. And what Mr. Bailey said was, that's my baby. Did you say, that's my baby? No, how am I gonna Excuse say me. that's Him not... and his cousin was saying that. Excuse me, him can I say something? How am I gonna say, say that's my baby? Wait, wait. Cause you know you slept know. with me. Cause you wait, know yeah, you slept with me. But wait, Judge Lake asked Miss Laws about her relationship with both men and whether she used protection during her intimate encounters. Mr. Davis passed away, believing he was Jamari's father, and his family accepted the child. Miss Laws concealed her infidelity, and only some of Mr. Bailey's family members knew about it. Whoops, that wasn't part of the plan. I kept that secret for so long. I was young, I didn't know how to say it. It would hurt. He's dead now. So he said he don't know if he could be the dad. What he told me Friday was, if both of these kids come out mine, I'm going to marry you. You know what I mean? So why, why even sit here and lie like you don't even know it's a possibility? And this is what secrets do to us. They tear us apart. The court calls Mr. Davis's sister, Miss Collier, as a witness. She firmly believes that her brother is Jamari's biological father. I just hope that all comes out to be true. Otherwise, we're gonna face some deep heartbreaks. Let's hear her out for a while. He was so happy, and then he told my mom that he had the baby on the way. My family always thought Jamari was ours, regardless. N uh, Nicole never told us about Mr. Bailey. What you're saying is that you have never received information to your brother was this child's biological father. So now the broken bond was at the mercy of DNA results. The only chance to repair the hurt and guilt was to get the results that either side wanted. But you know, in paternity court, you don't always get what you want. So here's Judge Lake pulling out the curtain. The biological father is Mr. Bailey. <laughs> oh. I'm very sorry, Miss Collier. He's still gonna be my nephew because I had that bond with Jamari. Jamari is also your biological child. It's, it, it's, it just blew me away, honestly. Being raised by the system was a hard call for Mr. Walker, but that was the one thing that inspired the foster child to never do the same to his children. Everything was going smoothly for him until his ex-girlfriend claims he's not the father of her 13-month-old baby. But why? Let's find out. I regret letting him sign the birth certificate. I just wanted to get the truth out today and just figure out he's not the father so I can get him off the birth certificate. I haven't been allowed to see my son the last six months because Miss DeVost claims that I am not the father. But you're on the birth certificate. Yes, Your Honor. I was there the whole time. Miss DeVost shamelessly admits she prevented Mr. Walker from visiting Kaimani because she believes he's not the true dad. This revelation did bring a shock to all of us. I mean, you can just see the expressions, how casually she admits it as if nothing else matters. You know what I did there, right? He was the one I was with, actually, when I took the pregnancy test and then I got it confirmed by the doctor. He was the person I was with at the time. Okay, well, it doesn't matter who you're with when the doctor tells you you're pregnant. It matters who you're with when the child is conceived. Right, um, I was with him and someone else. Okay, so that's why we're here. So they weren't exactly lovebirds, but more like friends with benefits. Ugh, I've just had it with that phrase. Like, come on, what benefits when you end up hurting each other in the process? And also, why can't you just be responsible and be sure right from the start? When I find out that she's pregnant, I really just start to prepare myself mentally. I had two jobs at the time. I was really trying to just prepare myself for everything. So I know what it means to have a child. I didn't really have a dad growing up, and I grew up in a system. I like babies. So this was your first child? Yes, Your Honor. And after going through a difficult time, you were excited about being a father. Did you just hear that? But it turns out there's another man in the picture, and Miss DeVost was intimate with him too around the time of conception. She's suddenly becoming a fan of honesty, admitting to her double dealings. 
just reminds me of the old saying, honesty is the best policy. As he was signing this birth certificate and being there for the child and going to doctor's appointments and witnessing the birth, Ms. DeVos, you knew all the while that there was another possible father? I was scared. I just never wanted to tell him that it wasn't his because I knew the situation he'd been through and it was just hard. I didn't want to go through it alone. Yeah, right. He was doing the right thing, but what you were doing was completely wrong. Mr. Walker reveals text messages where Miss DeVos drops the cold, hard truth. He's not your son. It's a harsh reality. And oh boy, it was all done over a text? You kicked me out with damn near no place to go. You wasn't thinking about our son or anything. You write back, he's not your son. You respond, Mr. Walker. So as long as I'm on the birth certificate, I'm not going anywhere. You ruined my whole life. You respond, you're not his father. You ruined your own life. Oh. Hurting him sooner or later doesn't matter, Miss DeVost, because you might not be able to see the hurt, but it's a common factor here, isn't it? However, just an opinion, you could have saved the man a whole amount of hurt by telling him earlier. Mr. Walker, did you have any idea any of this was going on after you saw your baby come into the world? Where, where, where were you in this situation? I caught hold of the situation when um, she went out of town to a concert, and when she came back, a friend of hers inboxed me saying that I wasn't his father. Ah, oh, well now it's all said and done. And the hurt has been so visible that we can cut it with a knife. So before we reach any conclusion, how about we just read the results first and make a clear stance? So here's Judge Lake with the DNA results. Mr. Walker, you are not the father. I'm sorry I couldn't give you the news you wanted, Mr. Walker. You have been a stand up guy. You should be very proud of yourself. Was it unprotected or protected sex? Unprotected. When I initially started, both when was, I met uh, Mr. Both, Barrage, both that relationship, no, not now at who the else? same it might time. Be another man, baby. Not at the same time. No. Mr. Hunter dropped you off at the hospital. You gave birth to the baby and named the baby after another man. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, my goodness. I tell him all the time, misery loves company. Of course, they don't, don't nobody want to see you happy. You gotta, you gotta stop listening to what people be saying. Can't nobody tell you about me, I told you. For a long time, a mother had been seeking to prove that her ex-boyfriend was the father of her son. However, the defendant was strongly against that possibility. But no worries, cause Miss Torre was ready to prove her case today. Brace yourself for a ton of accusations, doubts, and unexpected twists in this courtroom drama. Ms. Ture, you are in court to prove to your ex-boyfriend, Mr. Lacey, that he is the biological father of your adult son, Trayvon Lacey. You state that the defendant has been an absentee father full of excuses, and you want it all to end today in court with the truth. Yes, Your Honor. Well, the difference of opinion started with a bang when mommy and daddy had trouble agreeing on the birth certificate conundrum as well as the court appearance. It appears baby daddy may or may not have signed it. However, the evidence indicated pretty clearly what happened. I did not have signed the birth certificate. I was not, uh, I was incarcerated at the time Trayvon Thank was born. Thank you. Well, this birth certificate, Trayvon Lacey's father's name, Larry Lacey, but it's typed in. Was he present at the birth? He was not present, no. You basically just gave them his name. I gave him his name. And they typed it in. Yes. It seems these guys had difficulty being on the same page, but the one thing they agreed on was the paternity issue. Yep and the plaintiff was just about ready for this whole thing to be over with. Not surprising, since this had been going on for years. However, things went wrong with another guy in the picture. You know, okay, I made a mistake. It wasn't even a mistake, I was just living. Uh, and I, he just keep throwing his man in my face over and making my son feel bad. I said, I'm ready to put it to bed. That's what I want to do and get on with our life. And my intention is not to make Trayvon feel bad, nor is my intention to make Mr. Torre feel bad. Only thing I want to know is the truth. So how did this duo meet initially? Well, a chance encounter on a city bus led to a mysterious phone number and bam, there they go, moving in. But surprise, surprise, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, is it? Nope. Mr. Ray, you don't remember sending your son up with the phone number? Your Honor, yes, I do remember okay. meeting Mr. Lacey, and partially that is true. The thing is, I found him very attractive and very charming. Yes, I did, and I did approach him because I like what I, has, I saw. The chemistry, once we started talking, the chemistry was good. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? Baby daddy just leaving like that? It appears there's another side to this story and the defendant was all the more happy to share it, and thus began the doubts. 
betrayal lingers in the air as Mr. Lacey narrates one particular encounter he found the mama and another dude in his pajamas. Uh-oh! I had to go out of town and take care of some family business for a week. When I came back into town, I knock on the door, and the door opened. I see my pajamas. Mr. That is Ray not true. has on the pajama top. That is not true to me. The gentleman true. has on the pajama bottom. Your pajamas. My pajamas. I didn't argue. I didn't fuss. Not a pleasant sight, huh? Watching your woman with another dude? Yikes! But guess what? After arguing over the clothes and their placement, Miss Ture ended up accepting that she had been intimate with that very friend. Wow! Were you intimate with this guy? You said it's your new friend. I was intimate, yes. <laughs> How soon after he walks in on you and Pajama Man did you find out you were pregnant? Well, I didn't find out until I went to the OBGYN, and at that time, he, had, he told me that I was like 12 to 14 weeks already into my pregnancy. Really? Fast forward to the conception chaos. It appears Mama had been having a blast living alone in her new apartment, and so she had too much and was having fun times with the other friend. And then she met Mr. Lacey. You can pretty much guess what happened next. How soon after that did you transition to Pajama Guy? About two about weeks three, after. About, yeah, maybe about two or three weeks. About two or three weeks. I already weeks. had eyes on him, but I ran into Larry and I started talking to him. Miss Toure, you was on team too much back then. What? One key person had been silent during this whole ordeal. Yep. It was time Mr. Travon was given the stage to talk and share his side of the story. Things may have gone wrong left and right in his life, but boy was he a champion for his beloved mama. Kudos to him. I want to start off by, by saying my mom, she was, you know, an excellent mother. So I want to give her kudos for that. I believe I, I didn't turned out okay. Um, I have Larry's absence in my life. It definitely affected me in a negative way. Growing up, it was tough. I, I started having sex at a young age. I just wish if I had a father there, he could have pointed me in the right direction. Well, after that heartfelt speech by the son, daddy also came through with his own. By the looks of it, the man wanted to be part of his life. The only obstacle, though, was, yep, the baby mama. However, she denied all that pretty quick, and Judge Lake was on to her. The only thing I disagreed with Miss Torre on was not allowing me to be closer as I wanted to be. Miss Torre, did you keep Mr. Lacey away from the boys? Absolutely not. A lot of times with the relationships Absolutely that she not. was I'm saying a, and the things that she was doing in her life. No, I think exactly. the whole thing in a nutshell, he's just trying to get now. out of child support payment. So, in a nutshell, this whole court proceeding had been rather enlightening for Mr. Trevon. Poor guy had no clue mother had doubts about his paternity and that there was another guy in the mix. However, now he is about to get the truth after all. Yep, the moment was here. You are the father. Yes. Thank you, your honor. I told you. Mm -hmm. I told you. Now stand up, give my son his respect. Give him his, his father. Give him his father. Hug your daddy. How does it feel? It's exhilarating. I want to thank you for bringing out these results. Welcome to the circus of love, folks. Mr. Barrage was entangled in the classic tale of a man who thought he had been bamboozled into fatherhood. Grab your popcorn. Things are about to get real juicy. You've dragged Miss Steffens to court because you say you're being played for a fool. And when today's DNA results prove that you are not her daughter, Phelan's father, you demand that your name be removed from her birth certificate and you be reimbursed for the past eight months of childcare expenses. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. So picture this. A man feeling noble signed a birth certificate thinking he was the dad. Ah, uh, if only things were that simple, huh? Because these two forgot they were in court and started having a conversation on their own. And boy, was that talk full of revelations. You signed the birth certificate. You was there with me through the whole pregnancy, taking me to doctor's appointments, watching the kids. I also had another woman on the side, and you had another guy on the side. What girlfriend? I never knew it was a girlfriend. We were together every day since the first day we started hanging out. Well, both of them had side pieces of their own. What could go wrong in this equation, right? Spoiler alert, it did, as mommy believed their relationship was wholesome. But baby daddy believed he was being lured into a trap. You remember the day she told you she was pregnant? Yes. I sent them a text message of the pregnancy test. I told them I'm pregnant. He said, oh, I'm going to be there. I, that's my child. I'm going to be in his or her life. He's saying that I was just something to do. But that was never my impression. Me and Fernando, we was together all the time. It wasn't no one night stand. We was together consistently every day. Hold on to your hats now, because we're getting into the baby making business. While baby daddy believed he was being stolen from his girlfriend, 
Miss Stephanie's went into quite details of what initially attracted her to the plaintiff. Boy, this just keeps getting complicated. I, with my ex-girlfriend, I was good. She as well. She had a son. I took care of him. She seen how I was, you know, take care of them. She wanted that for herself. No, the reason that attracted me to him, I did like the way that he embraced my children. You know, me and him wasn't even initially talking at first. You know, he embraced my children. He bought things over for them. Buckle up, cause doubts, accusations, and a neighborhood gossip party coming right up. Mr. Barrage had a whole exhibit to prove his point about why he thought he was the wrong candidate for fatherhood. It seems people from the neighborhood along with Mama's family had been whispering all sorts of things in his ear that she denied, of course. For one, Your Honor, I don't have light blue, green, haze eyes, Your Honor. That's for one. The other guy has light eyes. Yes, Your Honor. And for one, Your Honor, I'm, Me and my I'm brown both skinny, have Your Honor. Light brown I, eyes. I, 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 the guy got light skinny complexion, Your Honor. So these are all the factors you believe that add up so yeah, that you're yeah, not yeah, yes, Phelan's father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, after that exhibit, Baby Daddy wasn't done with the doubt train yet. Uh, he was still on board. The next stop was the feature comparison. The plaintiff went as far back as the 1800s to prove his point that the baby did not have his features. My generation, I can go back on my generation, my families are closing that family all the way to like 1874. And like far as our genetic code, everybody, we, we got big eyes, big nose, big lips. You know, that baby got light eyes, little nose, little nose. Baby... is not only from you, Mr. Barrage. She's my child uh, also. She can have my genes. It appears that Mr. Barrage stepped up because of the things that went wrong in his life. And while he shared all that, Miss Stephanie's jumped in with her input of her own, accompanied by a shocking revelation. Mama was pregnant again. Didn't expect that, did we? Did people call you a bastard? You know how people treat you. You know how family members show favoritism for other kids, and these kids got both their daddy and their mother, and my mother's just a single parent, you honor? That hurts. Yeah. And that's why you said you stepped in. Yes, Sean. Moving on, Baby Mama's sister stepped up and shared her side of the story. She supported her sister's claim, but it seemed like she had a beef of her own with the plaintiff and how he had been bad-mouthing Miss Stephanie's around town. Do you believe Mr. Barrage is Phelan's biological yes. father? I 100% sure. How you know sure. you wasn't up in the room sleeping with us? I be my sister every day. I know my sister like the back of my own hand. If she was messing with anyone, she'd confide in me. I feel that Fernando is insecure with himself. He listens to every, what everybody tell him. Now, it seems there was another guy in this scenario, but Mommy claimed he was way, way after she got pregnant. Did that stop them from arguing while standing in court? Nope, not at all. From hitting, quitting to lubby dubby, these guys said it all, believe me. Was when it I, unprotected I, or protected sex? Unprotected, when I initially started, both when us, I met uh, Mr. Both, Barrage, both have, that relationship, no, not and at the else? same time. Who else, it might be another man, baby. Not at the same time. No. Huh. Not you at know the they same got a name time. for themselves. It, so was it during the window of conception? No, when? it wasn't, no. Well, Judge Lake had tremendous patience for this court and all that comes associated with it. So after dropping truth bombs like that, these guys still cared about each other. She went straight for that envelope that held all the power. Here it goes. Mr. Barrage, you are her father. Thank you, Your Honor. You're very emotional, Miss Stephens. Is it? I tell him all the time, misery loves company. Of course, they don't. Don't nobody want to see you happy. You gotta, he gotta stop listening to what people be saying. Was Mr. Hunter's story a true love or just a financial fiasco? While the latter was sure it was the second scenario, Mommy was here to prove him wrong. Get ready for a wild ride in paternity court, folks. Mr. Hunter, you opened your case in paternity court because you say there is no way you fathered the defendant's son, Josiah. You worry she's only saying you did because of the financial security you provide for her. Is that correct? Yes, Sean. So we've got the plaintiff financially fathering baby Josiah. But doubts are swirling, swirling in his head. On the other hand, though, Mama Holden confessed that they were in a boyfriend-girlfriend charade, but with a side of paternity paranoia. I take care of him financially. I do everything. Buy him diapers, milk, and I buy clothes. Everything a father has to do to take care of a child, I do it. So you pretty much stepped up as a father. Yes, ma'am. You have, but you have doubts. Yes, ma'am. But Miss Holden, has he gotten emotionally attached to Josiah as well? Yes. Well, what could possibly have gone wrong in this story? Oh, it did. When booze, birthday parties, and a questionable platonic to romantic transition happen, were they being safe? 
Who knows? We both was in a relationship, then we both became single. I invited him over to my birthday party, and he offered to pay for the booth at the party and offered to buy the cake. Well, that was a nice gesture for a friend, Mr. Hunter. Yes, sir. Hmm. Did you have any benefits in the back of your mind that you were looking to get later? No, ma'am. Protection or not, Miss Holden ended up dropping the I might be pregnant bomb, leaving the plaintiff in the emotional crossfire. He was heartbroken over this news. Why, you ask? Let's see that. You're having sex. One says you're using protection, one says you're not. Are you having sex with anybody else? Is this a committed relationship, or did you all fall into a sexual relationship without any foundation of a commitment? We were just friends. It wasn't a committed relationship because I knew she had other another friend. So amidst this, he said, she said, chaos, it does get established that there could be another baby daddy and Mama Bear naming the baby after him didn't help the matter either. Is that surprising to hear? I would have to say, nope. But I told him he could be the father. In this courtroom, could is an action word, because that means there could possibly be another father. Yes, sir. Yes. So once you heard that, Mr. Hunter, how did you feel? I was feeling some type of way. I was feeling like, okay, I could be as if, like, okay, now you're sleeping with, who knows who you're sleeping with. Time to dive into the birth certificates and calendar evidence. It seems Mr. Hunter was not the daddy on paper. Oh, yeah. He did drop her off at the hospital, though, but he was not the name on the birth certificate. It's a legal circus with more twists than a Marvel movie. This is Josiah's birth certificate? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, Hunter, is that your last name under? No, ma'am. Whose last name is that, Miss Holden? The other guy. The other guy. Mr. Hunter dropped you off at the hospital. You gave birth to the baby and named the baby after another man. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what time it was next? Conception time. Safe to say Miss Holden had a colorful calendar with two possible due dates, and both guys were smack dab in the middle of it. Hard to proceed from that one, right? No wonder baby daddy had doubts a mile long. Josiah coming three weeks early. If you sleep with two different men three days apart, unprotected, that's the wind, it's called a window of conception for a reason. And so you're still within the window. You in the window of doubt and in the window of confusion. You know, Mr. Hunter, I can see this really bothers you. I mean, it bothers me because I'm starting to get attached. Is Mr. Hunter the father or are we heading for the you are not the father moment? The suspense was palpable, but no worries. The results were in and the stakes could not be higher. Time to see what the future holds for Abby Josiah. Mr. Hunter, you are not fine. Sorry. Mr. Hunter, I can see that hurt and that's not the news I wanted to deliver today. I must still be in his life. This is why I did what I did. But this is acted. nothing I made up. The lab did. You made it all up. No, I did not. Well, the results are pretty I don't know made any up. of those people on that form. This is clearly the most shocking Very much. news we've ever gotten in this courtroom. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> My God. Does he have any clue that he is Daniil's biological father? No. This is. This is one of the biggest shockers ever. Emotions ran high as the case of Francois McQuarrie versus Perry McQuarrie disclosed. Miss Francois McQuarrie accused Miss Perry, her son's girlfriend, of betraying her trust by allegedly sleeping with her son and claiming he fathered her child. The tension was palpable as the two women presented conflicting stories. You have brought your son's girlfriend, Ms. Perry, to court today to demand the results of a paternity test. You state that after taking Ms. Perry in, when she had nowhere else to go, she rewarded you by sleeping with your son and now claims he fathered her child. Yes. Ms. Francois McCreary recounted how she generously opened her home to Ms. Perry, providing shelter and support during a difficult time. However, she felt betrayed when she discovered the alleged intimate involvement between Miss Perry and her son. Miss Perry, on the other hand, defended her actions, asserting that she was honest about her past and entered into a committed relationship with Miss Francois McCreary's son. You were with her son how long 
before you moved in? We were talking maybe about two or three weeks prior to that. Not. Were you there when we got together? See, my kids uh, tell yes, me everything, so. unlike you. Your You're not my child, so do my kids tell me anything? They have nothing to hold from Your me. Your kids don't tell you everything. Whatever what, what I need to know. Miss Perry maintained that she was fully committed to the relationship and had been truthful about her past, while Miss Francois McCreary expressed concerns about her son's well-being and the potential harm caused by dishonesty. I let them know upfront what my situation was. Like, I was in a sexual relationship with a woman. This is who I am. Your son is the first man that I ever been with. I seen that she has raised a good man, and I seen the good in him. So I applaud her for raising her son to be a good man, and that's who I wanted to be with. My ideal of a man was her son. The son, Breton McCreary, joined the proceedings, expressing his desire for unity and understanding between the two women he cared deeply about. Despite the tension and conflicting stories, he emphasized the importance of family and urged his mother and girlfriend to put aside their differences for the sake of their future together. You believe her child is your child? Without 100%. I mean, I, I, when I first held him at the hospital, it was, I knew he was mine. I was there every step of the way. Did he you sign the birth certificate? I missed mean, a little issue with that, but. What, what is it? What's the little Hello. issue? She, she was married and the whole legal situation with that. Judge Lake disclosed the DNA results, confirming Brenton McCreary as Miss Perry's child's biological father. Relief and joy swept the courtroom, marking a turning point from conflict to reconciliation. Embracing, the family celebrated. Mr. McCreary, you are the father. Bam. I'm happy now. That was my blood. You say you're happy now. Yes, I am. I just want to know if it's my blood. You plan to be the grandmother that I'm this child sure. deserves? Yes. yes, I want to hold him now. Yes. Judge Lake underscored the importance of love, acceptance, and trust in building a family. The resolution emphasized understanding and communication, concluding the dramatic and emotional courtroom experience with hope for a united and happy family. Mom, you know I love you. I know. And she's really a beautiful and perfect woman. She's, okay. And I want us to be a family. Let's stop just bickering and all this no fighting. More, I promise. You know how I'm a family, and I know how you love yeah. me. And I love you too. Okay. You'll always be my girl. But, <laughs> baby, come here. Come here, baby. Come on. Come here. <laughs> Miss Hummel is central to the intricate love triangle, accusing Mr. Pack of denying paternity to eight month old Lola. Seeking resolution, she petitioned for a DNA test to establish Mr. Pack as Lola's father. Ms. Hummel, you claim you were caught in a love triangle with the defendant and his current girlfriend, which has left him denying he fathered your eight-month-old daughter, Lola. You have petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that he is her biological father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Pack, supported by Ms. Fuentes, adamantly denied the paternity of Lola, anticipating vindication through a DNA test. Tension rose when Miss Hummel proposed a DNA test for Mr. Pack regarding Miss Fuentes' child. A revelation surfaced. Miss Fuentes had a history of romantic entanglements disclosed in a prior court appearance, adding complexity to the legal drama. How soon after that did you find out you were pregnant? Um, to be honest with you, I don't remember dates all correctly, but it was probably about six, seven weeks. And so when you slept with your ex, did you use protection? No, I did not. Was that within the window of time your child was conceived? It was. It was. As the tangled web of relationships was laid bare, accusations and admissions permeated the courtroom. Ms. Fuentes confessed to a post-breakup rendezvous with her ex, an event that fell within the alleged conception window. Mr. Pack, now gripped with uncertainty, expressed concerns about the paternity of both children. The court decided to delve deeper, ordering DNA tests not only for Lola, but also for Miss Fuentes' newborn, Anthony. Your Honor, the DNA test is all I ever wanted, and that baby's not mine, so I'm not gonna sit here and spend my time and energy and my money on a baby I don't believe that's mine. So, Miss Hummel, what are your hopes today? That he's gonna step up and take care of his child. Because he you know for certain this is his. Oh yeah, 110% I know that this child is his. The suspense lingered until the DNA results were revealed. In a surprising twist, Lola was confirmed to be Mr. Pack's daughter, unraveling a thread of relief and resentment in Miss Hummel's emotions. However, the saga didn't end there. A second bombshell dropped. Mr. Pack was also determined to be the father of baby Anthony, 
prompting a collective sigh in the courtroom. Mr. Pat, you are the father. I told you. You are the father. Yes, ma'am. Now we're gonna continue, I will. try to work with her and try to do the same thing we were trying to do in the first place, is still try to get along with her and take care of the baby. As the court adjourned, the judge urged the conflicting parties to seek counseling and resources, emphasizing the importance of putting the well-being of the child first. The narrative left the audience pondering the complexities of blended families and the uncharted territory that lay ahead for all involved. All right, sir, two children. You all gotta find a way to break through this because the anger and animosity you exhibited in our last hearing, you can't do that in front of the children. Now you have children who are siblings. Yes. We have counseling and resources for you all. Please take advantage of it. Figure out how to have this blended family of sorts. The morning unfolded with the case of Jackson v. Figures, a saga filled with intrigue and unanswered questions. Miss Jackson, poised but determined, accused Mr. Figures of being the father of her son, Daniel, a claim Mr. Figures vehemently denied. Miss Jackson, you claim Mr. Figures disappeared 20 years ago, and now you want to prove that he is definitely your son, Daniel's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Figures, you admit to being a former ladies' man, but you say there's no way you fathered Miss Jackson's child. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The courtroom atmosphere shifted as Miss Jackson recounted their initial encounter, painting a picture of infatuation and fleeting romance. Laughter rippled through the audience as the complicated details of their meeting were uncovered. The judge, keenly observant, delved into the complexities of their past, unraveling a tale of youthful indiscretions and tangled relationships. You all did have a sexual relationship, right? Yes, we, we did. We so, had... Mr. Figures, you acknowledge that, right? Yes, ma'am. You did. Uh, did you use protection? Were you guys using protection at the time? Well, no, ma'am. Not, not using protection. We no. didn't. We didn't. No. All right. And we so. I definitely know it wasn't just me. Definitely. Oh, you do. You I say you definitely know definitely it wasn't. I definitely know that. The drama reached its zenith when Miss Jackson produced a symbolic artifact a baby book featuring side by side images of a young Daniel and a long lost Mr. Figures. The judge, with a hint of anticipation, revealed the results from DNA diagnostics, leaving the courtroom gasping in shock. Mr. Figures was declared not the father, unearthing a mystery that had endured for two decades. Do you know <laughs> who did, I mean, for 20 I years? Like, yeah, but he's been there all along. <laughs> My God. Does he have any clue that he is Daniil's biological father? No. This is... This is one of the biggest shockers ever. In the aftermath, the judge offered words of solace and counseling for Mr. Figures, acknowledging the emotional toll of the revelation. The court adjourned, leaving the audience to contemplate the fragility of human connections and the profound impact of the past on the present. The echoes of the unexpected twists lingered in the air, leaving a concrete sense of reflection in its wake. So this child's father has been in his life almost his whole life and he didn't it's know it was his father? It's not almost, his whole life. He's so he been could. there. Daniil, I wanna know how you feel. I it's mean, the other guy been here, so it makes more sense. I feel more better if it was him, cause like, he's been there. So, it makes more sense. An interesting drama unfolds as the case of Razor and Hunt versus Jacobs and Hammonds takes center stage. Seated before Judge Lake, Miss Razor and Mr. Hunt accuse their parents, Mr. Jacobs and Miss Hammonds, of dropping a paternity bombshell during a recent heated argument. Yeah, I have to say this. It's, it's, it's been longer than two weeks ago, just that this argument sort of brought everything out. And Yana. when you heard that, immediately you felt. I was in shock. I was just like, uh, how you just gonna, despite the argument, that, that's cool. But when you got your children and you arguing with your spouse, that don't got nothing to do with us. The tension is apparent as Miss Razor recounts the pivotal moment, revealing a truth that has shaken the core of their familial bond. Gasps from the audience punctuate her narrative, unveiling a family in turmoil. Now that I was sitting in the living room playing video games with my friends. I overheard what he said and it messed me up. And when he walked out the house, I was sitting in a state of You're shock. On the so you overheard this as well? Yes, I did. Me, me and my friends actually. And I was just sitting there like, 
Whoa. Because we were having a get together. Everybody was at the house. Judge Lake navigates the intricacies of the familial saga. Flashbacks transport the courtroom to the heart of the argument, painting a vivid picture of a family torn apart by long buried secrets. Loyalties are tested, and the very essence of their shared identity hangs in the balance. We're here with Ms. Razor, and you agreed to take a DNA test. Wow. Did you have a relationship with Ms. Hammond? Yes, we had a physical relationship. It wasn't a relationship. You pulled that your brother. So Were you intimate with Mr. Farmer? Is what he's saying true? That's yes, Uncle Tommy. That's just nasty. Wow. That is not my father. As the courtroom confronts the aftermath of the revelation, emotions run high. The consequences of shadows concealed for too long come to the fore. The family, once united, now stands fractured, each member grappling with their version of reality. Mr. Jacobs, you are not Mr. Oh, oh, you is scandalous. In the hushed moments before the adjournment, Judge Lake reflects on the delicate balance between truth and the ties that bind. In the end, the family starts things over again and is now happily living together. Hey, fraternity court, this is precious. No matter what the result is, you know, Richard is still my dad. I'm still gonna get married in January. He's gonna walk me down the aisle. My, my moms and my pops, we decided to put everything under the carpet and just start over with a clean slate. This your boy Keemik signing off. Peace. In the solemn courtroom, the case of Mansur versus Seer unfurled with palpable tension. The order to be seated marked the beginning of a crazy legal saga, as Mr. Mansur claimed five years of wrongful imprisonment due to the alleged paternity of Miss Seer's son, Dylan. The unproven biological connection formed the crux of the dispute. She was a friend of my aunt. She was best friends with my aunt. We all lived in the same little community. She lived across the street. I knew of her, I knew her, I've spoken to her. But as far as intimacy, we was together one time. And I hate to be crude, but it was a one night stand. I don't care what your version was. I was far well, from a one night dating, stand. Living across the street from each other? Far from a one well, night stand. My wife's gonna be upset right, I'm across right. the street. Mr. Mansur recounted a fleeting encounter, labeling it a one night stand devoid of intimacy. Ms. Sear vehemently contested this, painting a more complex picture of their relationship. The courtroom echoed with their conflicting narratives, each trying to assert the validity of their version. In today's society, I think it's cruel and unusual punishment to be sentenced to five years in prison, rapists and, and murderers. That's basically what happened. I missed a court day. You missed being a father. I didn't know he was mine. You've had these so-called results in court when I was gonna be sentenced to prison. Things could have been a whole lot different. I know I would have embraced Dylan a lot more than I did. The proceedings exposed Mr. Mansur's financial struggles and life circumstances, hindering court attendance. Miss Sear accused him of evading responsibility for eight years, heightening emotional turmoil. The climax came as Mr. Mansur questioned the DNA result authenticity, casting doubt on the legal ordeal. The judge urged prioritizing children's well-being, setting the stage for a truth-revealing resolution. As I go through this evidence I and I get the time, to the, the information, I do see right. there is no address, there's no photograph. She didn't have that information. There, there is, is no part information in there. about you. It's all blank. Obviously, your contention for this particular test is You're true right. because there's no evidence that you were there That's on that exactly day. Right. Amid rising emotions, the DNA results were revealed. Mr. Manser was not the biological father of Dylan. Gasps and shock reverberated through the courtroom as the gravity of the revelation settled. Miss Sears staunchly defended the results, while Mr. Manser grappled with a profound sense of betrayal. Dylan, I'm sorry, bro. Uh, this is why. This is why I did what I did. But this is acted. nothing I made up. The lab did. You it. made it all oh, up. No, I those, did not. Well, those results oh. apparently. I don't know are made any up. of those people on that form. Oh my God. This is clearly the most shocking Very much. news we've ever gotten in this courtroom. Oh my God. Judge Lake provided guidance and resources to navigate the tumult aftermath. The courtroom drama left an indelible mark, unraveling the complexities of relationships, the consequences of legal battles, and the profound impact on the lives of those entangled in the intricate web of paternity disputes. You cannot stand there five years in prison, and then I say, do you know who your son's father is? And you say, yes, I'm still in touch with him. That is a really 
really huge pill to swallow. Really? If he tells you a half a line or tells you you look cute today, you gonna be back up there with him? The next thing you know, you in the bed, halfway down to making another baby with him. And I think you know what I'm saying. I was in a relationship at that point in time. Oh, while you were having the threesomes with them, you were in a relationship yep. with somebody else. Yes. So you proved that I'm such a I am. You proved it. I wanted to know for a fact that, that my child or not. You like I told I'm such you. No don't no know who my baby is. You father, proved period. it. You proved your point. You're good. In the hushed chambers of the courtroom, a heartfelt saga of entangled relationships and unresolved paternity unfurls. The commanding presence of the judge sets the tone for the case of Bosley v. Jackson, a tale fraught with emotional intricacies. Seated across from each other, Miss Bosley and her son brace themselves for the revelations that will unfold. Explain why you opened the case. I feel like my son made a terrible decision by signing a birth certificate. You know, basically, I just feel like we need to know because I don't want my son to have to go through life wondering if this is his child or not. So you feel like you gotta save your son from a mistake he made. I do. Against a backdrop of uncertainty, Miss Bosley discloses her son's regrettable decision to sign the birth certificate, a decision she now seeks to rectify through a court-ordered DNA test. The defendant, Miss Jackson, acknowledges her infidelity, but vehemently insists that Mr. Bosley is the biological father of three-year-old Maverick. We were working together, and he was starting off like, oh, I love you, and then we had sex. So you meet and you almost immediately start a sexual relationship. Correct, Your Honor. And start talking about having babies? Correct. At first, I didn't believe it because I heard it once before. The courtroom becomes a crucible of conflicting narratives and emotional turbulence. Mr. Bosley, despite harboring doubts, had signed the birth certificate, an act that now casts a shadow over the proceedings. Miss Jackson's indiscretions come to light, revealing a complex web of cheating, oral encounters, and workplace entanglements. This is about the fact that your child's paternity is in question. If you have slept with two co-workers, given oral sex to one, while you supposedly getting to know Mr. Bosley, no, it's not so far-fetched that people would also assume that you may have slept with that person or maybe even another person. In a surprising twist, a potential biological father, Mr. Green, makes a dramatic entrance, adding another layer of complexity to an already convoluted story. The characters stand at the precipice of revelation as the DNA results, the harbinger of truth, promise resolution. I just want to know. That's all I'm really... I, you know, it's, it's, it's a kid on the line, and no disrespect to you. That's why I called you up that day, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not a kid, I just, a child. I just want to know. And at this point, what are you hoping for, Mr. Bosley? Do you hope Maverick is your son? Yeah, I do. Okay. If he if he minds, then we can move on. But if he's not minds, I'm gone. The revelation reverberates through the courtroom. Mr. Bosley is Maverick's biological father. Relief and newfound responsibility intertwine as the characters grapple with the aftermath. The judge, a figure both stern and compassionate, delivers a message that resonates with the weight of consequences. The way you have approached your sexual relationships thus far, and if he tells you a half a line or tells you you look cute today, you are gonna be back up there with him? The next thing you know, you in the bed, halfway down to making another baby with him. And I think you know what I'm saying. I can see it in your eyes. You get it, right? Yes, Your Honor. In the courtroom, the call to be seated marks the commencement of a legal saga. The the case of Morgan versus Mangum. Greetings are exchanged as the presiding figure, Judge Lake, takes control of the narrative. A delicate legal dance ensues between Miss Morgan and Mr. Mangum, each holding a piece of the puzzle that could reshape their intertwined fates. I'm sick of him denying our three-week-old daughter. He hasn't done anything for her since she's been born. I'm not gonna take care of another man's child, Your Honor. This is your baby. She looks just like you. She looks just like our one-year-old daughter. She's yours. Step up and do she what you have to do. She's been unfaithful, Your Honor. He's lying. The baby looks nothing like me. Are you blind? Composed yet resolute, Miss Morgan asserts that Mr. Mangum is the father of her three-week-old daughter, Joy. Her plea paints a poignant picture of a strained relationship teetering on the precipice of doubt. In stark contrast, Mr. Mangum counters with allegations of infidelity, presenting what he deems as a revelatory bombshell. 
The courtroom becomes a stage for their emotional turmoil. The first time I caught her cheating at my family home when she was picking up uh, her daughter. So did you show up with another guy, Miss Morgan? No, Your Honor, I didn't. He's lying. So they you were never in a car with a guy? No, Your Honor. They have manipulated his mind. Other family members, oh, they, have, they have him thinking that he's not the father when we all know he's the father. As revelations surface, the judge's queries unravel a complex tale of abandonment and heartache. Miss Morgan, shoulders burdened, shares the struggles of raising two children alone, abandoned by a man questioning the paternity of their youngest. The courtroom becomes a theater of emotions, with laughter punctuating the serious exchanges, highlighting the human complexities at play. She don't even have any futures. Give my baby time to get a face. The first child looked at just exactly like me. This child looked nothing like me. She doesn't have any futures yet. She three Futures? Weeks old. She does have a future. She's three weeks. That's futures. Features. Oh. <laughs> I was about to say, that's why we're here, to get this baby a future. The climactic moment arrives as DNA results the ultimate arbiter is unveiled. The courtroom holds its breath, awaiting the revelation that will either mend or sever the familial ties. The judge's closing words resonate with stern hopefulness, urging the embattled couple to rise above their differences for the sake of their children. Mr. Mangum, you are the father. That's your beautiful baby girl. Yes, Your Honor. Joy is yours. How does that feel to know for certain? We could be parents now. We could set aside the differences, try to make things work out for us. In the drama of Rogers versus Stone, the narrative escalates with tension and conflict. The judge introduces the case of Miss Rogers, claiming Mr. Stone is the father of her son, Christian. Mr. Stone vehemently denies paternity, accusing Miss Rogers of promiscuity. I was at my friend's house, or well, I was at her boyfriend's house, and we were chilling, and he walked through the door, and I'm like, really? Of all places, he had to walk into where I'm at. So we ended up, we was talking, laughing, joking about old times, how you been, catching up and stuff. You know, we went back to my friend's house with her boyfriend, and we had sex at that. Miss Rogers, calm but resolute, narrates the history of her relationship with Mr. Stone, tracing back to their elementary school days. She details a rekindled connection, leading to a series of encounters with an unexpected twist involving a threesome. The courtroom becomes a stage for the emotional recounting of their complex relationship. He did not tell me that this girl was his girlfriend. He was single. I would not have kept sleeping with him That's if I wasn't that he was in a relationship. I, I'm not that type of person to sleep with somebody in a relationship that I know was in a relationship. I was not talking to nobody. When I was, when I was talking to him, when I was talking to him, it was just me and him, and we was never together. We was never in a relationship. Amidst accusations and denials, the judge seeks to unravel the truth. Miss Rogers shares her struggles as a single mother, abandoned by Mr. Stone, while he contends that she concealed her relationship status. The narrative climaxes with a revelation of DNA results, the ultimate arbiter of truth. You can't tell nobody it's a possibility. You can't do that. That have your mind wondering. And then other information that I, I conceived that I know that was true. So you do know that it's a possibility. You just don't believe it for certain. Deep down inside, I don't think it's my child at all. This is the first time he's sitting this. Let me tell you something. When me and him talk, this is his baby, OK? As the judge delivers the results, the tension reaches its peak. The revelation that Mr. Stone is not the father marks a turning point. Emotions run high, with Miss Rogers expressing frustration and Mr. Stone maintaining his stance. I told you I got lied about nothing. I know what I did. I paid for extra. It's cool. Not cool. Child. It is it's cool. You proved what you wanted to. You proved that I'm such a thick I am. You proved it. It's not Thank that you. I wanted to you know for it. a fact. No, I wanted to know for a fact that, that my child did not. You proved it. You like proved I'm you, such I no don't no know man, my baby girl, without a father. You proved Period. it. You proved your point. You're good. In the aftermath, the judge delivers a stern message urging the former couple to rise above their differences for the sake of their child. The courtroom drama concludes, leaving the protagonists to navigate the aftermath of a truth revealed. The curtain falls on a legal saga that explores themes of doubt, uncertainty, and the complexities of human relationships. Mr. Stone, I know. And I tell you what, you all used to be very close friends. Miss Rogers probably can use a friend, but a real friend. Not one that's getting her into situations that are gonna, that's gonna negatively affect her future, but one that will build her up and remind her what's possible. Always and, in Always. I just wanted to know the truth. Once a love triangle, now turned paternity puzzle. Miss Strong was here to prove her husband was not the dad of Miss McLean's little surprise package. While she demanded he accept it, they accepted her truth 
Get ready for the wildest ride of your life. Me and Ms. McLean got together. We were friends, wanted to do something for our birthdays. We had discussed doing a threesome, which it was something my husband had always wanted to do, and I figured if I did it with them, then... You and Ms. McLean got together to talk about this. Yes. For your birthdays. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did I call it a love triangle? No, oh, that's my bad. Allow me to rephrase it. It seems a birthday bash turned into a threesome brainstorming session. Oh yeah, because you know, nothing says birthday celebration like setting ground rules for group activities, right? It happened, we had some drinks, the music was playing, we had a threesome, had a good time that night. We discussed everything beforehand of what, you know, possibilities could be. What possibilities? You know, if she did get pregnant, of which we were under the understanding she or there was a medical reason she couldn't. So, so before you all had this threesome, you set parameters? Yes, Your Honor. Ooh, that group project resulted in a surprise of a lifetime, didn't it? Well, hold on tight now, because next comes the Betrayal Express. Baby Mama dropped the pregnancy bomb, but conveniently forgot to mention it could be Mr. Strong's. Yeah, <laughs> pretty convenient, I'd say so. When Miss McLean came and told you she was pregnant, how did that conversation go? I asked her if it was my husband's child, and she told me no. I was in a relationship at that point in time. Oh, while you were having the threesomes with them, you were in a relationship yep. with somebody else. Yes. Moving on, it seemed Baby Mama had a passionate side gig while the trio was busy discussing threesomes. She was cooking a bun in the oven. Whoopsie daisy. But who's the daddy, though? The husband was nervously on board, thinking it's a setup. And amidst this mess, did he stop having group times? Oh no, they didn't. They were not breaking beds. They were breaking boundaries, for sure. A white person and a black person can still have a white baby. Well, no, they can't. They technically can, not to argue with you. Look I have up. mixed nieces and nephews. No. And what, what they can have is, an albino, is, but uh, is a biracial child. So what I will say, you are correct, Miss McLean. It appears the trio's communication skills were about as murky as their decisions. Yep. Mr. Strong, a man clueless about the birth, discovered he might be a daddy when baby Angel was already a month old. Yeah, imagine that. This was a whole different level of craziness. I did because come like in all reality, my daughter has a lot of Douglas's tendencies. Holding on her ears when she's tired or she's frustrated, Douglas does that. His yabba dabba doo feet, the Flintstone feet that he has, my daughter has. His laugh, my daughter has that laugh. So while Mrs. Strong was busy wondering about Angel's parentage, her dear husband, on the other hand, was 50-50 on the situation. Were they creating a blended family or something? I'd have to say, knowing them, it could be possible. There's a 50-50 chance because I see a lot of features that could be mine, and then I also see a lot of features that aren't mine. See, I'm part Hispanic, so I mean, there's not many redhead people in my family. I mean, I do have a little bit of Irish in me, but I mean, I'm just trying to be certain because I did. I grew up without a father. So I mean, if I am a father, I do want to be there for her. And because you grew up without a dad, you don't want to continue that cycle. No, ma'am. Next up, Judge Lake had a question of her own, more like an observation. We know how curious she gets, and boy, was her observation spot on. Because Mrs. Strong was engaging in these activities because of some issues of her own. Wow. A gift from God is how I'm going to look at her because I just had cancer removed a couple months ago. He's never going to have a biological child from me. Okay, so there are also some other medical issues yes. and extenuating circumstances where you feel like you are not going to be able to give Mr. Strong any children. I know I can't. Well, the court was ready to wrap up this roller coaster of emotions. The highs were pretty wild on this one, but the real question still remained unanswered. Luckily, not for long, though. Time to face the music. Mr. Strong, you are not the father. I'm sorry to have to deliver that news, Mr. and Ms. Strong. It seemed like you were very happy at the thought of having Angel as your little girl, but unfortunately, you are not her biological father. Paternity court buzzed with anticipation as Norval faced Ward and Ward. Tensions hung in the air as participants took their seats. Miss Norval, the focal point, resolute and determined, prepared to unravel the web of denial and deception clouding her pursuit of truth in this legal drama. We were living together, first of all, so I don't understand now all of a sudden since the new baby we and the new wife, together, you put him out. I don't understand how the new baby and the new wife, she's not mine. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, he's so wishy-washy. He just texted me last night. But that's Mrs. Ward. You understand what I, I mean? Did. The judge took command of the unfolding drama. 
Miss Norville's endeavor to establish the paternity of her daughter Jacqueline propelled the narrative into a labyrinth of accusations and conflicting testimonies. Mr. and Mrs. Ward, the accused, loomed as enigmatic figures, their defenses teetering on the brink of revelation. He was perfectly comfortable with the baby until he got married. I was not completely comfortable at first with uh, Jacqueline being my daughter because uh -huh. of how it all went down. Uh, we moved into an apartment together. Not even a week later, she's kicking me out telling me she cheated on me. So it's like, oh, I'm, I'm the baby daddy, but you, you, you kicking me out? So what type, of, what type of love is that? The courtroom resonated with haunting melodies of confusion conflicting narratives. Mrs. Ward, an enigmatic presence, stood steadfastly beside her husband, while Mr. Ward grappled between remorse and justification. His text messages emerged as a subplot, adding layers of complexity to the courtroom drama. Do you have a question of paternity as it relates to your wife's child? Yeah, you know, at first I did for a long time. You know, I really didn't believe, you know, he was mine because okay. of how it happened. He got conceived in January, and the text messages go all the way back to January with this guy, all the way into present when I had found out that, you know, she was cheating on me, all the way until she was, uh, gave birth. As paternity results loomed, Norville sought to establish Ward as Jacqueline's father. The courtroom drama peaked, revealing shocking truths. The results declared Ward the father of both Jacqueline and another child. The judge, astounded, urged resolution for the children's sake. This paternity court hearing ended, leaving a tale of love, betrayal, and the quest for paternity. What this is going to mean for these children when they grow up and wonder why are we so close in age but got two different mamas? Yeah, I got to tell them the truth. This is chaos. This is going to be chaotic for these children. It's all wrong. It's time to start trying to get it right. Go off and talk to Dr. Jeff. Be honest. Figure out what y'all going to do with this. This, this is a mess right here.